Gallagher, 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 Gallagher. newspaper morgues. They're not much for beauty. But if you know where to look, they're great for getting a first-hand report of things that happened years ago. So follow me and we'll see what we can dig up. You know, uh, back in the 1800s, the newspaper office was a pretty rough place. And the newspaper business was a mighty rough business. So for a woman to be working on a paper was not only unheard of, but absolutely out of the question. That is, until a young lady named Adeline Jones appeared one day at the Daily Press office. So in this chapter of our story, you're going to see what happens when the first lady reporter in history and Gallagher the copy boy are used as bait to trap a ring of confidence men. Adeline? As a wealthy young woman, just right to be relieved of her money, and Gallagher, her younger brother, all done up in a velvet suit. So here now is the case of the big swindle. Another exciting episode in the further adventures of Gallagher, 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 Gallagher. Gallagher. Oh. Nosing around for who, what, when, where, how, what, when, where, why, what, when, where, news. Thanks for the ride, Charlie. Top of the morning, Officer McCarthy. Oh, the top of the morning to you, Gallagher, me lad. Fine day, isn't it? Oh, a fine day indeed it is. Ah, uh, it's a beautiful morning. Morning, John. Hi, Gallagher. How's it going? Nothing much happening. It's kind of slow. Admission of a new state somewhere out in the wild west won't sell newspapers. Circulation is off 5% in the last month. If it goes to 6, some of you guys are going to be looking for jobs. So it's up to you. What we need is news. Local news. Headlines. Boss, I don't make the news. I just report it. And there's nothing going on. Oh, there's always something going on. Like what? I tell you, crime has hit a new low. There hasn't even been one routine murder in over a week. Well, don't sit there and whine. Do something about it. I should commit murder? Nonsense. You haven't got the gumption. That's the trouble with the help these days. Gallagher, come here. Listen, you still want to be a reporter, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, if Brownie here doesn't come up with a headline yarn by midnight that sells newspapers, you take over his desk in the morning. Gallagher? Are you listening to me? Watch your language, boss. Lady present. Hmm? <clears throat> Good morning, miss. Good morning, sir. <laughs> and, uh, what can I do to help you? I'd like to speak to your editor. That is I, Jefferson Crowley. I'm Adeline Jones. Well, <laughs> pleased to meet you, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, uh, have a seat, won't you? Thank you. Right there will be fine, thank you. Well, uh, you have a story for the Daily Press, I uh, presume? Not a story, Mr. Crowley. I have a lot of stories, but that depends. Oh, really? Depends on what? On the kind of terms we can arrive at. Terms? Perhaps we'd better be blunt, Miss... Uh... Jones. Miss Jones, uh, just what is it you want? Employment. Uh, Miss Jones, the Daily Press does not have a society page. This is a man's paper. We publish news, stock market, sports, an occasional nod to the arts, and that's it. Sorry. That's why I'm here. Because you are a man's newspaper. You're only realizing one half of your potential. Women do read too, you know. They'd buy your paper if you made it more attractive. Just how do I make the paper more attractive to women? 
Suppose you hire me and find out. Hire you? As what? A reporter. A... It's unheard of. Wait, the city hall, the city beat, the city room? Those are no places for a woman. I don't see why not. Well, first of all, the language, Miss Jones. I know all the words. Maybe you do, but uh, the gents around town would be mighty shocked. Oh, I see. You're worried about their embarrassment, not mine. Look, when it comes to reasoning, women are impossible, so don't try to be reasonable with me. Well, I thought this was a forward-looking, progressive newspaper, fighting for the rights and freedom of men and women, but I see I was mistaken. I shall offer my services to your competitors. Good day. You! Who gave you permission to leave? The interview is not over. Back to work! Back to work! I said back to work! Tell me, Miss Jones, does smoking bother you? Not a bit. There's nothing like the smell of a good cigar. Uh, how old are you? Old enough to vote, if we women had the vote. What you're really out for is a lark, not a job. Am I right? Come on, I want the truth. The truth is, I need the job. My mother and I were swindled out of everything my father left us. Oh, Miss Jones, let's not get sentimental. Suppose I were to lose my right mind and give you a job. What do you have in your mind that would sell my paper? Writing a series on confidence men. I want to tell all the women readers how those crooks work so they'll learn how to protect themselves. Uh-huh. And spend two cents a day on our paper learning how, right? Right. Just what you know about confidence men. I told you my mother and I were swindled. Does that make you an expert on the subject? Not in itself, but it made me mad enough to go out and investigate the subject. Oh, really? What's another name for con man? Grifter, bunco artist. What do they call a phony business office? A store. What's come on money? The boodle, the bundle. What's a victim? A mark. And what's a mark? A victim. Hmm. When could you start? Right now. I'll try you for two weeks at eight bucks a week. Fair enough? Not fair at all. But I'll take it. Gallagher! Gallagher! Take Miss Jones around the plant. Introduce her. Get her acquainted. Pete! Oh, Governor. I want a banner for tomorrow's edition. Daily Press makes history again. Hire's first lady newspaper man. Oh, well, the top of the morning, you gotta get a me boy. Morning. Hey, what's the matter, me buckle? Something wrong? Something wrong. Uh-huh. Newspaper business is going to rack and ruin. And you're asking me, is something wrong? Oh, rack and ruin, you say? Didn't you hear about Crowley hiring that lady reporter? Oh, that's it. Yeah, that. From now on, the paper can only go one way. Her plunk. It's the end of a great era. Nothing will ever be the same again. Mark my word. Where's your gang? We broke up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How come? Wasn't nothing in it, that's why. So what you doing now? Working. Are you guys working, Stiffs? Some's gone back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Beats bumming around getting in trouble. Why don't you guys wise up? We did already. We took it over this into town. Yeah, kid stuff. Stiff. This time we're gonna let you go. But next time, have more than four coppers in your jeans or we're really gonna work you over. Uh. 
Gallagher, my boy. Gallagher? Yes, sir? You're late. Sorry, sir. I was mugged and robbed. You disappoint me, Gallagher. From you, I expect nice, fresh lies. Not old chestnuts like that. Come here. I'm assigning you to Miss Jones. You're what? You will be her leg man. Do I have to? Yeah. But, sir, have a heart. I have. That's why I'm sending you. Miss Jones is on a project. You will be our only means of communication. But, boss, you don't know what this is going to do to me. Look, unless you keep in constant touch with her, she could lose her life, not to mention the story. Sounds like you need the cops, not me. Gallagher, who wins all the arguments around here? You do, sir. Well, then be quiet and listen. We'll call the cops if and when we need them. But first, we've got to trap the con men. That's where you come in. You and Miss Jones will be the bait, lambs for the shearing. I don't get it. You will, you will. Here, report to Miss Jones at this address. And be ready to embark on this career of high adventure that you've always been yapping about. Yes, sir. And Gallagher, show a little enthusiasm for the project. This is a great opportunity, sir. A chance of a lifetime, sir. That's better. And hurry up. The wolves will be snarling at your door by nightfall. <laughs> On you laughing boy. The last and longest laugh might still be mine. You. You. In here. I want all the floors mopped and polished. I want the brassware shined. I want the chandeliers sparkling. I don't want to find one cobweb or one speck of dust. Now time is precious. So let's get busy. Beginning to see what I mean? This is no time for idle chatter, Mr. Brown. Now get to work, both of you. Okay, okay. I beg your pardon, Charles. I mean, uh, yes, miss. With pleasure, miss. That's much better. You must get in the habit of using correct address. One slip at the wrong moment could be disastrous. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. No, miss. Boy, she got you jumping to the hoop. I'm not doing it for her. I'm doing it for the paper. Let's get busy on that chandelier. You're doing what for the paper? Setting up this trap. And you start polishing this brass. Setting up this what? Trap. We're going to catch us some swindlers. Oh. Is this her house? No. She borrowed it off some lady friend of hers who's in Europe. I don't get it. Didn't the boss explain? All he said was I'm bait or something. That's right. You and Adeline. You're supposed to be your little brother. Me? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And your father just died and left you his fortune. No kidding. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're kidding, but for real. And as soon as your father's death notice hits the paper, the con men will come calling. We hope. Calling for what? To steal your fortune. What else? Yeah, but how? By selling you phony investments, bogus mining stocks, stuff like that, see? Oh. And this joint's supposed to be a front, like um, a bunco store in reverse. Right. And to make it look real, you're supposed to be our butler. Right, have, Governor. Then that does it. If I have a butler, why am I doing menial chores? I quit. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Come on, get back to work. Hey, wait a minute. I'm a rich kid. No butler can order me around. Now let's not carry this thing too far, chum, or I'm liable to forget myself and give you a spanking. Back to work. Come on, Brownie. Now, this is no work for newspaper men. Especially what you're doing. You're right. There's a limit. Yeah. This is women's work. She ought to be doing this herself. Sure. Undignified work for men, Adeline. Besides, the place looks pretty good, don't you think, Gallagher? Looks clean enough to me. Evidently, I did not make myself clear. I shall repeat it. This goes for you too, young man. 
The work I am doing has Mr. Crowley's full approval. He backs my play to the limit. Now, if you refuse to cooperate, or you lack the intelligence or the initiative to do the job, I have complete authority from the daily press to fire you and bring in another team. Need I say more? That's better. Well, the paper is on the streets already with the item that can bring the con man calling today. Seen the noon edition, Vince? No. Listen to this. Timothy B. Rushton, well known in the social and sporting circles, was killed in India recently while on a tiger hunt by the Maharaja of Wangapore, it was learned here early today. A daughter, Adeline, and a young son, Timothy Jr., of this city, are the sole survivors and inheritors of his estate. To those wishing to extend their sympathies, Miss Rushton, recently returned from Europe, is residing at etc., etc. How's that sound? Like a ripe one, I'd say. Exactly what I was thinking. Fine. You both should be commended. I put a roast in the oven in case you've worked up an appetite. Meanwhile, Master Gallagher, I have a very pleasant surprise for you. Would you like to try it on now? What is it? Well, I can't very well have my brother dressed like that. It's the wrong side of the tracks. Better not waste any time. We may have to do some alterations. Oh, no. No, you won't get me into this. I'll do most anything for the Daily Press, but here's where I draw the line. Find out the nature of his business and then tell him I'm resting. Why? Never mind, why. Just do as I say. Yes, miss. Put that back where it belongs. And remember to watch your manners. Don't speak unless you're spoken to. You still got your apron on. Yes? John C. Talbot, Esquire, Insurance and Investments. I would like to see Miss Rushton, if I may. Would you please state the nature of this call, sir? I'm an old friend of Miss Rushton's father. I see. Uh, well, uh, Milady happens to be resting at the moment, sir, but I shall... Charles? Uh, yes, miss? Did I hear the bell? Uh, yes, miss. It's uh, Mr. Chauncey Talbot, miss. Whom? Chauncey Talbot, Miss Rushton. I'm a dear friend of your father. Oh. I see. May I tender my deepest sympathy, Miss Rushton? Thank you. Won't you come in? Charles? Charles? Oh. Mr. Talbot's hat. Oh, yes, miss. Of course, miss. My brother Timothy, Mr. Talbot. Amazing resemblance. The same resolute eye, the same fearless chin. Pity. Pity. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I shan't take long. 
I must apologize for troubling you at this time, but your father left us a great deal of unfinished business, you know. No, I didn't know. What a pity that gentlewomen such as yourself are left so helpless in these matters. But of course, that is precisely why I am here, at the behest of your dear father, so to speak. Really? Now, first of all, there was a will, of course. Of course. And the executor? I am the executor. Most unusual. Oh, my father did not consider me as helpless as you may think, sir. May I ask the nature of your business? Primarily an invitation to visit our office at your early convenience. Why? We hold securities in Mr. Rushton's name. Their disposition will need your approval. Would tomorrow morning be convenient? Say at 11 a.m.? Naturally, the sooner the better. Charles? I'm sure we shall get along handsomely together. I'm sure we shall. You're both very brave. Hey, what do you know? It worked. We're on our way, but there's still rough seas ahead. Hey, you sounded like a pretty nice fella. Don't let him fool you. That's why those con men are so dangerous. And what now? You go down to the office and tell Mr. Crowley that we've made contact and I'll be needing that $5,000. 5000 He knows all about it. It's part of the plan. I didn't hear that grifter ask for money. He didn't, but he will. And when he does, we'll be ready. As soon as he accepts that mark money, we got him. From now on, you may be followed. You're going to need a reason to go to town. It's time for your music lesson. Music lesson? I thought it was time for supper. It'll be ready when you get back. There's no violin. You won't need it. Now, this is what you're going to do if you're followed. Professor, it's out of tune.
one makes a wisecrack, gets it. Well, bless my soul. It is you, isn't it? Remember, I gave you a fair warning. Relax, Gallagher. You are living proof that clothes do not make the man. Say that again? Never mind. You wouldn't be here unless it was something important. So give me the report. She wants the 5000 in Boodle money. Already? You're to put it in here. You made the contact already? The grifter called this afternoon, and boy, is he smooth. She made an appointment at his office for tomorrow, so give me the boodle and I'll beat it. I have to get back through the music school before it closes. Huh? Skip it. Just give me the money. Well, I, I, I haven't got it. You haven't got it? Well, it takes time to raise $5,000. But a big man like you, Mr. Crowley? I mean, with all your connections? Well, I may be a big man with connections, but the paper is in the red and my credit is... What am I explaining all this to you for? Listen, you go back to that dame and tell her she's got to do something for herself. What does she think I am, the First National Bank? She expect me to hold her hand? Am I the only man around here with any mental resourcefulness? <laughs> Music school on eight, back home again. Glad checks out all the way. Good, good, but keep at it. One can never be too sure. Miss Rushton. So glad to see you. I'm sorry I'm late. Five minutes? Tush, tush. Come, I have some wonderful news for you. Thank you, gentlemen. Your father's portfolio of investments. Surprised? I must say I am. Unexpected windfalls are always welcome. <laughs> oh, sit down, please. Thank you. I don't believe even your dear father was quite aware of the potential in these worldwide mining stocks. Really? If we play our cards right, you won't have a thing to worry about the rest of your life. Oh, that's so very comforting, Mr. Talbot. But. First of all, I must ask you some rather personal questions. You may feel free to do so. Thank you. I know it's a delicate matter, but um, what is your present financial status? Well, Father left us. We are not exactly what you would call in want, if that's what you mean. Could you be just a little more explicit? Bluntly, Mr. Talbot, I am afraid I'm going to have to seek employment in the next year or so. And I am worried about Timothy's education. Exactly what we have in mind. There is, however, one small problem. The bulk of these stocks, and they are sound, mind you, with a great potential, the bulk of them have been purchased on margin. I'm afraid I don't understand. Quite simple, Miss Rushton. Your father, shrewd man that he was, your father picked up these mines for small down payments. Since he traveled about so extensively, he empowered us to pay off the balance as the notes came due. Do you follow? I believe so. Naturally, the estate owes us for the monies we have been advancing. How much do I owe? In round figures, $13,000. 13000 No, 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 it's not as bad as it sounds. A certain amount could come out of dividends, although I was rather hoping we could plow those back into the capital. Tell me, how much cash could you raise? I believe I could raise 5,000. Oh, would that do? Well, that's just at the moment. Uh, I possibly could convert something into cash in a, a week or two. Oh, that's better. That's much, much better. Hey, Calvick. Right here, Sir James. 
Carol Beck. Miss Rushton, may I present Sir James Fryer Smythe, our esteemed director. You remember Timothy B., don't you, sir? How do you do, Sir James? Timothy B. Timothy P. Why, yes, 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 of course. Uh, by Joe, sir, you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> I'm not Timothy, sir. I was referring to his daughter, sir. His daughter. A woman? The late Mr. Rushton's daughter, sir. A business office is no place for a woman. Give her what she wants and get rid of her. You must forgive him, Miss Rushton. A financial genius, really. Far above the mundane routine of the office. I quite understand. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, please sit down. Thank you. Uh, where were we? Uh, oh, oh, yes. 5,000 was the figure I believe you mentioned. get her $5,000 when the time comes. When will that be, sir? When she comes up with more evidence against the Empire Investment Company. What more can we ask for? They got stocks owned by a man who never even lived, let alone died. You tell her this. The Empire Investment Company checks out clean. Sir James Fryer Smythe has a reputation that goes back to the foundation of the British Stock Exchange and the Empire Investment Company is underwritten by Lloyds of London. What's more, the Bunko Squad down at City Hall has not had one single complaint against them. Now, you tell her to put that in her pipe and smoke it, or whatever a woman does who doesn't have a pipe. Yes, sir. $5,000 from me and mark money, and we've got them. Dead to rights. Mm, what a stubborn man. The boss does have a point, Abby. You. Me? I know a way you can do it. Do what? Well, I can't go back to that office without the $5,000, but you can. Why? Mr. Crowley wants evidence. Evidence he will get. Books, files, phony stocks, everything. But how? How do I do that? It's so simple, it's beautiful. <laughs> sure get hungry long about this time of day. <laughs> How's a nice, big, thick roast beef sandwich and a stein of beer? That high it's on to you fellas, huh? <laughs> How about it, Talbot? This guy's making me hungry. Might as well. You've been massaging the inside of that window for half an hour. It's the outside that's dirty. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just about to do that little thing, Governor. Just about to do it. <laughs> right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, I tell you, there's nothing like the great outdoors to give a man an appetite. <laughs>
Well, are you coming? checks and phony stocks. That's better. Now we have something to show the Bunko Squad. Good work, my boy. Good work. You guys have been using your brains as well as your heads. Meanwhile, I too have not been idle. Here is the boodle. Five thousand dollars in recorded currency. Now, if you hurry, Miss Jones will have time to get this to the grifters before the office closes. Yes, sir. Gallagher. I needn't remind you to be careful with that money, need I? No, sir. Nevertheless, I do ask you to be careful with that money. Yes, sir. Because on your shoulders rests the reputation of the daily press. Yes, sir. That's right. When you play the fiddle, you gotta wear sissy pants, don't you? Not around here, you don't. Let's take them off them. Hey, hold this one, will you?
take care of that. Hey, uh, what's the idea? You don't bang people over the heads with a fine violin. Hey! Hey! What's going on there? What's going on here? After all, Grady, you have just missed a beautiful little fight. Huh? It's too bad you have to have the bad luck to always miss them, ain't it? Uh. <laughs> what happened? I made it. I ran all the way. Did you get in a fight? But I saved the money. You better hurry up, because the jig's up. Poor dear, he's in a state of shock. No, I'm not. Just out of breath. Well, come in and sit down. Did you say the jig's up? I think so. The shadow must have heard. The shadow? Yeah, that guy that's been following me. Well, he's there today when I come out of the music school. And he must have heard when the Red Devils jumped me. Red what? The Red Devils. They're a West End gang. I used to belong to Blue Diamonds on the East End. Blue who? Never mind about that. What did the shadow hear? Well, I'm not sure. But he must have heard when Yats, Yats is Red Devil's leader, he must have heard him yell, Hey, that ain't no sissy. That's Gallagher. Well, this shadow must be getting suspicious, because he tries to grab the violin case away from the White Wings when the fight's on, you see? Well, the whole point is, the shadow must be on to me. And if he's on to me, then he must be on to you guys. And if he's on to you guys, then the jig's up. See? The boy is 100% right. The jig, like he says, is indeed up. All right, over on the couch, the three of you. Must be a real valuable instrument you have in there, the way you hang on to it. Have it, I guess. What's the name of them fine violins that cost so much, uh... Strata something. Stratodidotus? Stratopidgeta. What's the name of that guy, Vin? You ought to know. Who cares? Who cares? I care, that's who. If that's a fine instrument that's worth something, I care. Suppose you open up the case and we take a look, huh? Well, it's just a cheap old fiddle. You don't think I'd be running around with a real strata who's it's do you? Well, I don't know now. Rich, clever, cultured folks like you? Well, you wouldn't be owning any old cheap five and dime fiddle now, would you? Open it. And you want to know something? There's no fiddle in here, that's what. Is that so? Well, if there's no fiddle in there, then what is in there? You have to keep gabbing. You got a better way to pass the time till Talbot gets here? I'd interest you folks to know that Mr. Talbot is closing out our business door because it's time for us to shake this town. The only hitch we got left is what to do with the three of you. The con men like Talbot got a reluctance about murder on account of what attracts too much attention. Take me now, I'm different. I got no reluctance along them lines at all. As long as I make things come out nice and clean. Come off it, Bill, come off it. So, supposing we get back to where we was before the subject got changed, and supposing you open up the violin case, huh? Do as he says, Gallagher. It's the principle of the thing. For heaven's sake, this is no time to think of principles. Open it. Okay. But only because the boss says you're the boss. What do you know? Money! <laughs> You're the accountant, count it. And all the time I'm thinking it's the missing records and files. Five thousand. This is our lucky day, Vincent. What we're gonna do with this in Rio de Janeiro? Yeah. got a shot? I guess I wasn't thinking. I guess I wasn't thinking either. You know something? You're a pretty good fella for a lady. 
if I was 10 years older, you could be my best girl. <laughs> That's the ticket, boys. Off to the pokey with them. We just arrested Talbot. Caught him red-handed. Or green-handed, that is. He was clearing out the place, ready to skip town. Clever bunch of bunco boys we nabbed there. Yes, sir. All I needed to convince the police was that evidence you brought me. By the way, how are you fellows? Fine, thank you. Good, good. Well, social hours over. Back to work. Come on, back to work. Can't sit around here all day, you know. Come on, back to work. Pete, headline for the Sunset Extra. Mr. Crowley. Take this down, Pete. Yes, Governor. Mr. Crowley. Miss Jones, nobody interrupts my mental thinking. All I want to know is, am I on steady or am I not? Got any more ideas? Loads. I'll try it for another six weeks. Fair enough? If I'm still here in another six weeks, you better find yourself another desk, because I intend to be sitting right there. <laughs> That's the spirit, huh? <laughs> 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 now, uh, where was I? The headline. Oh, yes. Uh... Oh, no. The money, the $5,000. We left it in the house. Forget it. I'm sending a porter over there to clean up the place. I'll have him burn it. Burn it? Sure, it was counterfeit. I got it from the cops to trap the grifters. Do you know what I went through getting that past enemy lines? I practically gave my life. One thing you've got to understand, my boy, it's not the money that matters, it's the principle. Now, no more interruptions, please. I've got newspapers to sell, headlines to write. Pete. Yes, Governor. Take this down. Quote, fearless editor traps ruthless swindlers. Unquote. <laughs> as Gallagher said, she's a pretty good fella for a woman. And on her next program, the pretty good fella and the Daily Press copy boy continue their war on crime. This time with Graft in the City Hall as their target. What was that? Was that an explosion? It sure was. The third one this week. Excuse me. On our next program, Edmund O'Brien decides to fight City Hall when Gallagher picks up a hot tip on a series of mysterious explosions. How much did you hear? What did you get? A real bee, Daddy. There's something fishy with the gas valves. What about this? With our fiery editor ducking a libel suit, pretty reporter Ann Francis employs Gallagher and his carrier pigeons in a daring scheme that almost fails. How do you plead, Crowley? My dear judge, do I seem like a man of violence? As a matter of fact, you do. A man of my standing and position in a crummy jail cell. It's disgraceful. Don't you know it's rude to point? Especially with a gun. I have my orders. All of Gallagher's pigeons came home at once, but there was no messages. What do you make of that? That, that means they're in trouble. That's what that means. And we shall not let them down. Hey, that's right, it's That's the way. Don't point that thing at me. Let's get rid of it. Don't miss the Daily Press versus City Hall. Our next edition of fun and excitement with The Further Adventures of Gallagher. 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 Around for who 